Hello and welcome to the second video in our series of key events in British history. Today we're going to focus on the Norman Conquest. So we're going to be describing who the Normans were, explaining what caused the Battle of Hastings, this famous battle lots of people talk about, and explain briefly the consequence of this conquest. We're also going to look at the word conquest itself and summarise some key information. Now to get us started, I'd like to have a look at the picture in the bottom right of this screen. I would like you either to write it down or to have a think about what you can see happening in this image. And secondly, why might someone have been angry at what's happening here? You can pause this video at this moment so you can have a think. OK, now you've had a chance to look at the image in front of you. Uh, we can tell you that it's part, as many of you may have known, of the Bayer Tapestry which is like a cartoon strip of the story of the Norman Conquest. But instead of being drawn, all the images have been carefully sewn or embroidered into the cloth. Now, the piece that we're looking at here shows King Harold uh, being crowned as King of England after the funeral of the previous king happened earlier that morning. He's sitting there on his high throne, scepter and orb in hand. The new king has to his left he's got nobles and then this character on the right is Archbishop Stigand who was the one who did the ceremony to make him king. Now this all sounds fine but why might someone have been angry at what's happening here? Just have a think for a moment. What do we mean by the Norman conquest? Firstly who were the Normans? The Normans were the descendants of the earlier Vikings, and their name derives or comes from Norsemen, meaning Northmen, who, as well as the Franks and Romans, had settled in northern France. When we talk about conquest, we're talking about the state of taking over someone, uh, conquering them, acquiring anything by strength. And if we look in the definition, when you talk about the conquest, we are talking about this particular history. A bit of background about the years before 1066. By the time of Ethelred II's death in 1016, there was dissent or arguments and confusion, and the Viking king, Canute, seized the throne. He just took it. Canute then was king for a while, and his sons followed him. And in 1043, Edward the Confessor took back the English throne for the Saxons, and the Vikings were pushed out. Edward had returned from exile in Normandy, where he'd been sort of protected by the Normans, and one of the Norman nobles he'd become friends with was William, Duke of Normandy. But why was there a crisis in 1066? Well, it was simple. Edward the Confessor, pictured here on the right, died without an heir to take over after him, and several people believed that they should become king. The leading nobles in England, or the Witan, decided that Harold Godwinsard should become king. And this is shown in the picture from the Bear Tapestry on the right. Although Harold had been crowned king by the decision of the Witan, the situation was not clear as there were several other contenders for the throne. Firstly, Harold himself, he is a powerful English noble and believed that Edward the Confessor had promised him the throne. You have William, Duke of Normandy, who also believes that Edward the Confessor had promised him the throne. And apparently, Harold Godwinson had sworn an oath to William, saying that William should become king. Finally, you have Harold Hardrada, the powerful Viking warrior, king of Norway, who believed that through his ancestor, King Canute, who had once ruled England, that he should become king as well. So many of you have heard of the Battle of Hastings. However, this was not the only battle in 1066. The first battle was at a place called Stamford Bridge. And for those Chelsea fans out there, no, it's not your stadium. The battle of Stamford Bridge is much further north, as you can see in the picture on the right. This was the battle between Harold Godwinson and Harald Hardrada. So after Harold Godwinson had been claimed king, Harald Hardrada invaded the north of England with 300 ships. He had some victories in the north and took over the area of York. Harold Godwinson heard about this, 
got an army together really quickly and marched or walked all the way from London straight up to Stamford Bridge, 210 miles in five days. Now, this took Harold Hardrada by surprise. Apparently, when Godwinson's army arrived, Harold Hardrada's men had not had their chainmail armour on because it had been a hot day and they hadn't expected a battle. This put them at a disadvantage. And Harold Godwinson's men quickly defeated Hardrada. Unfortunately, Harold Godwinson had no time to rest or celebrate because while this was happening, William, Duke of Normandy, was landing on the south coast of England with his army. And therefore, Harold Godwinson had to turn back around and head back down south. So here we are at the main event, the one you've all been waiting for, Harold Godwinson versus William, Duke of Normandy, the Battle of Hastings. Now, this was a bloody, tough, gritty, disgusting battle. The armies met on the 14th of October on a hill near Hastings in Senlac Hill. The closest sort of village to um, this battle was actually a village called Battle. So the Battle of Hastings should really be called the Battle of Battle, but possibly because that sounded silly, they decided to name it after the biggest nearest town uh, of Hastings. Now, Harold's army were on the top of Senlac Hill in a tight shield wall formation, and William was at the bottom with his horses and his archers. Now, I'm not going into the battle too much, but Harold fought hard at the start and William could not break through. Then, through a series of sneaky moves where William pretended to retreat and some of Harold's men broke the shield wall to chase William's army and the Normans, William was then able to cut down these soldiers and gradually reduce the strength of Harold's shield wall. William tried this trick a few times and after an entire day of bloody fighting, William was able to break through Harold's defences and Harold was killed. Now, as many of you may know, the idea is that Harold died from an arrow in his eye. William, winning the battle, took control of England, marched to London via a few places and was crowned King of England at Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day in 1066. Um, there were a few problems with that on his coronation when he became king because his guards outside the cathedral couldn't understand English and when some of the locals came and cheered William becoming king the guards got scared not understanding what the Englishman was saying and they started killing a few of them not your greatest start did you know that Harold might not have actually died by getting an arrow through his eye he may have actually just been hacked to pieces by William's soldiers no less gruesome but not as unique um, the reason we think this is because on the Bayer Tapestry, there is an inscription saying Harold Rex Interfexus Est, which makes us think that the person with the arrow in his eye is Harold, but he could quite possibly be the person on the right-hand side falling down. We just don't know. So why is this Norman conquest significant? Well, firstly, when William comes in, he and his French nobles replace the existing Saxon or English nobles in Britain and through the creation of the feudal system, completely reorders English society with the king at the top, the barons below him, the knights below them and the freemen, serfs and peasants below them. He also crushes any rebellion that he sees. The Norman Kings in England were closely aligned with those in France, and they all spoke French. William the Conqueror did not speak English. As time went on, though, the division between the English Normans and the French Normans uh, grew. And by the 1300s, the Normans aristocracy leaders thought of themselves as English. As well as the physical impact of William the Conqueror's conquest of England, we also have a lot of things we may not have realised come from that conquest, such as many French words that were gradually merged into the English language. For example, beef, cafe, disease, 
essay, furniture, garden, kitten, message, parliament, restaurant, and soldier. Now, thinking about this conquest, there are some questions I want you to think about. So, for instance, if you were an English Saxon noble, what would you think about the conqueror's victory? If you're a French noble who helped William, what would you think about it? If you're an English peasant, what would you think? And if you're an English child, what would you also think? Press pause and have a think about this. Did you know that the Bayer tapestry is not actually a tapestry at all? It's an embroidered linen cloth. It's about 70 metres long. It was made in England, having been commissioned by William's half-brother. It's made from coloured vegetable dyes and is divided into 50 panels. And it almost got lost during the French Revolution, where it was going to be used to cover military wagons. However, luckily, it was hidden by a local lawyer and kept safe until everything calmed down. If you want to find out more about the Norman Conquest, I can recommend looking at the BBC Teach series, it's a series of six short videos describing the conquest, looking at the causes, events and consequences. Now for task one, the story of 1066. You have two choices here. You can either summarise the story of the Norman Conquest in 1066 in no more than 50 words, or draw pictures to represent the story of the Norman Conquest in 1066. You can either press pause while you do this or go back through the video to help you. Now for task two. How useful is the Bayer Tapestry? I would like you to write an answer to this question. How useful is the Bayer Tapestry as a source of information or evidence for what really happened in 1066? If you go back through the video, you'll find out the information you will need. You can use these sentence starters to help you with your writing. On the one hand, I think it is useful because. However, on the other hand, and finally, overall, I think, which is what you'll use for your conclusion. Try and use some of the explaining and evaluation words that are listed on the right hand side of the screen. Press pause while you do this to help you. Great work today. Thank you for learning about key events in British history with us today. Remember, this is a video, so you can always repeat it if you want to go back over something. It's not cheating. Practice makes perfect. Till next time, goodbye.